Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be talking all about browser toolbars. Yeah, you remember these things? These used to be like all the rage back 10 or 15 years ago. And it was like the way to customize your web browser. If you were using probably Internet Explorer back then, right? Let's be real. This was a great way to, to give it a little more functionality. But you don't hear much about these anymore because nowadays, if you want to customize your browser, you're going to go to your browser's add-ons or extension store. You've got Chrome with the Chrome Web Store. You've got Firefox with the add-ons database, whatever they call it. And you've got browsers like Microsoft Edge that are based on Chromium. Therefore, it can also install the Chrome Web Store applications. Actually, I used Edge in my fake Chrome extension saga video if you want to go check that out. But today we're going to be specifically focusing on Google Toolbar because I found this out recently they still have the web page up where you can go to download this. Yeah, in 2021, you can go and download Google Toolbar. This is not like through the Wayback Machine or this is not me getting this from like old version or old apps.com. This is the official web page and I'll have it linked down below and you can see it on screen right now, google.com slash toolbar. Yeah, you can still get this thing. And what's really interesting is this kind of reminds me a little bit of what we saw with MSN Premium. That video, you can go check it out up in the cards here if you missed that one. But to give you the gist of it, this is a subscription service that Microsoft still offers today, even though that Windows pretty much has all of the functionality of this service already built into the operating system. Not only that, but the overall interface of the program looks like it does not fit in with Windows 10's design language at all. And you had some like buttons and links within the program that would just take you to web pages on msn.com. And when I saw this, this web page right here, I instantly thought of that because this page looks like it hasn't been updated in many years. So I've got this opened up in Microsoft Edge here, the latest version of Edge on the latest version of Windows 10. And you can see right off the bat, it'll say you're using Chrome because it thinks we're using Chrome because it's a Chromium based browser. That's great all of the features of Google Toolbar are already built into your browser. So you can't download this from uh, Chrome or from Firefox. You can only get this in Internet Explorer. Yes, Google still like offers a toolbar for Internet Explorer. That's the only browser you can get this on. Internet Explorer 6, to be specific here, 6 or above, Windows XP, Service Pack 3, slash Vista, slash 7 Plus. All three of these operating systems not being supported by Microsoft anymore. But obviously there's the plus there to indicate that you can do this on Windows 8 and Windows 10 as well. But I'm honestly going to take a guess that Windows 10 probably didn't even exist when this web page was created here. Because if we scroll down here... There are some references to some Google services that don't exist anymore. For example, you've got Google Instant right here. Anyone remember this? So this was back in, I think it was 2010, 2011, Google introduced this feature called Google Instant. And essentially what it was is you would go to Google and start typing out your search query. And as you typed, it would begin searching. So it wasn't like you had to type it out and then press enter like you do today. And it was killed off back in 2017. And the reasoning behind it essentially had to do with mobile devices. Google put out a statement saying, we've got a lot of searches coming in from mobile devices and it doesn't really make sense because obviously you can't use Google Instant on like a phone because I mean, like the web page would load and everything, but you weren't gonna be able to see the search results as you were typing because your keyboard was gonna be obstructing the view, right? So they just ended up axing the entire project back in 2017. The other thing you can see, you've probably already noticed it from this uh, screenshot over here is Google Plus. <laughs> everyone's favorite social network, right? Yeah, it was killed off back in 2019 uh, to the surprise of nobody, except for maybe like the two people that actually used it. But, and then if we click on learn more here, check this out. Look at this page with the old Google logo, obviously Google Plus we just talked about. But yeah, it just it's just really interesting because honestly, I don't think this page has been updated in many years. And yes, you can only get this again on Internet Explorer 6.0 or above, a browser that currently holds a whopping 0.75% of web browser market share worldwide, according to StatCounter. Now, this chart here, I, I should point out, is for all platforms, so like desktop and mobile devices. 
But uh, if you go over to the chart that has only desktop usage, you can see that Internet Explorer isn't even its own category. It's just grouped into other here. So we can't actually see how it ranks in this chart here. That's why I've got this one because it's got all these browsers here, including IE, with again a market share of not even 1%. So that's what surprises me that they still have this around today. And honestly, this could literally be a case of Google just forgetting that they actually host this web page. Because as you're going to see, when we take a look at the program itself, it doesn't look like it's changed a whole lot. So let's go ahead and just dive into it. So I've got Windows XP opened up here because it does say that you can do this on Windows XP with IE6, which we have right here, Internet Explorer 6.0. But the funny thing is, although you can browse to the main page here, and you can see if we scroll down here, the download button actually works this time because we are on IE6. When you click to download it, it can't display that page. It cannot display the download page. So I had to copy this download link and paste it into my pal here. And uh, we'll just do that here. And then you'll be able to get to the download page and agree to the terms of service, which were last modified in 2012. That should give you a clue uh, at what we're looking at here again. And I already have this downloaded, but you just click on accept and install. And then you download the file right here. Now, what's interesting is the file itself. Let's just minimize out of this. Actually, we'll just close IE. The file itself, if we go to properties here and go to digital signatures, it has a timestamp of Thursday, January 21st, 2021. Yeah, this year. So it could be that they're still, you know, they're updating the digital signature on these executables, but the application itself has a copyright date of 2018. But as you're going to see, like, I do not think this, I mean, maybe they've been doing minimal updates, but I would think if they were going to actually support this thing, they would give it like a, like a, overhaul at this point because as you're going to see a lot of the stuff in it doesn't work anymore it's just it literally just does not do what it was initially intended to do now unfortunately we cannot take a look at this on windows xp i'll show you what happens when we try to run the installer so we'll run it here did you notice it said unknown publisher i think it did it said unknown publisher interesting now yes the setup application is very chrome like if you've installed google chrome this will look very familiar to you and it's able to connect to the internet it's able to download download the, the files it needs to, but when it actually goes to install, it will fail, and I'll show you what happens here. So it's installing, and you get this error code right here. The installer encountered an error. And if you click on help here, obviously IE cannot display the page here, so we'll go back to MyPal. And by the way, if you're interested in hearing about MyPal, it's a modern web browser for Windows XP. You can check out this video up in the cards. I did a whole video on it. But yeah, this brings you to this page over on Google Chrome Help. Fix problems installing Chrome. Uh, not what we're trying to install here, right? And yeah, let's do uh, in the last year. Was there anyone trying to install this in the past year? It looks like there aren't any great matches for your search. Okay, let's just search for the error code. Nope, not in the past year, which doesn't surprise me because, you know, I don't know who is actively, you know, out there trying to install this on Windows XP. But yeah, it doesn't work on XP, at least this version right here. Uh, we could go to old apps or, you know, old version, download an old version, but in Windows 7, it does work. So here we are in Windows 7 with Internet Explorer version 8.0, as you can see right here. So we're going to download it and we get those same uh, terms here. So we'll accept and install. And sure, we will set Google as a default search engine and set the home page to Google. That's fine will accept and install. It's actually not uh, downloading it when I click on, I wonder if we can uncheck these. Will that do something? No. <laughs> it's not, it's not working. Okay, no worries, because I do have uh, a copy downloaded on my host computer. We can just copy that over to the VM. And there we go. So we're going to close out of IE and run the same setup executable. This time it will download it and it'll actually be able to install it for us. And we can take a look at what Google Toolbar is all about. Thanks for installing. You must restart all your browsers before using all your browsers, not just Internet Explorer, all of them. We will restart now. And here we go. So you have this, this page here that it brings you to, which also looks like it hasn't been updated in a while. And this is, you know, on google.com here. This is not like a HTML document that it just has downloaded. Uh, you've got these images here with the old logo. 
it just tells you search with Google Instant, which you can't do anymore. Look at that. Look at the old Google page there. Gosh, it just seems like this was so long ago. Now, there are some things that, that do work. For example, the highlighting, and we'll get into that in a moment. But first off, what on earth is going on? It's, it's like all glitched out. Okay, there we go. No, it's, it's staying like that. As I as I move around, it's like, oh no, what is going on? What is, okay, I'm just going to close out of it and open it back up. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Well, we can go to the about page here and you can see the copyright date is 2014. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff that like, you know, the installer is, it has a digital signature from this year. The copyright date is 2018. The web page license agreement is 2012. This says 2014. It's like all over the place, right? But the version specifically is 7.5.8231.2252 slash EM. And uh, we can just go to Wikipedia. Now go into Wikipedia. Oh, we can't. <laughs> Hang on a second. I think I've got Fire. No, I don't have Firefox installed. Okay, let's just let's just switch back to Windows 10 here. So the Wikipedia page says that the latest release. So this is wrong then. This is not the latest stable release. Let's just try to copy the version info to clipboard. And let's go to Google here. And we'll just search it with Google Toolbar. Released in 2016 according to Google-toolbar for internetexplorer.updatestar.com. Yes, if it was released in 2016, that explains why you've got the new Google logo up here, right? And this just takes you to the Google homepage. This is your search box here, and I could do a search for Yahoo, let's say. And it will show you suggestions in here. So if I want to search for Yahoo Mail, I can do that and press enter and it will you know, do a Google search for Yahoo Mail. What's also cool is if you have a Google search page opened up here, even if say you didn't access it from Google toolbar, you can see Yahoo Mail is still in there. If I do a search for Michael MJD, it will change what is in the Google toolbar search box to Michael MJD. You can also change what area of Google you're searching with. So for example, say I want to search for Yahoo, and instead of searching Google, I want to search Google Images. I can click that here, and now it will do a Google Image search for Yahoo. And you can also do this with YouTube. Like if I click on YouTube here, it will just, now this is what's interesting, right? And this only happens on Windows 10 here. Uh, it actually will redirect you, and this is just Microsoft. This is not anything that Google has to do with, but uh, there are certain web pages, like when you try to go to YouTube, just go to you know youtube.com, it will open that in Microsoft Edge and basically say, we recommend viewing this in Edge, yada, 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 just to try to get you away from IE, right? But you can search with YouTube. You can also search Google Maps, for example. So we can pull up Google Maps and do a search for Yahoo. You can also go to Google News here if you want to search Google News, or you can go to more. And this is where things get interesting. So you'll notice that you've got a couple of things in here that uh, don't exist anymore, like Orcut. Anyone remember Orcut? This was another uh, one of Google's many attempts at a social network. You've also got Picasso web albums, which also don't exist anymore. Picasso was fully discontinued in 2016. So if this came out in 2017 or even 2016, you would think they would remove that, but they haven't. So for whatever reason, they've kept it in here. And that's why like there's a bit of ambiguity regarding when this version specifically came out. It has to be at least from 2015 because that's when they introduced this logo right here. This is the new, and this is the current Google logo. They introduced it first back in 2015. So it has to be from there, right? Or maybe it could be pulling this from a web page somewhere. That could also explain it. But again, it says copyright 2014 in the about area here. But yeah, I just find it really interesting because even in 2015, uh, Picasso is still around, but Orcut would have been killed off. And it's the fact that it's still in here is just kind of weird. Next up over here, you've got this add buttons and gadgets to your Google toolbar, which you can't do anymore. This just also displays a web page that uh, it just says it can't display the web page anymore. Now you have Google Plus. What's interesting is when you click on this, like if I wanted to share this page with my Google Plus followers. I can click this and it actually opens up a Google accounts sign in window. So let's try to sign into a Google account. So I've just signed into my, this is actually a Google account that I created from my Google TV because I could still do that when I made that video. You sign in and then it says Google Plus is no longer available for consumer, personal and brand accounts. So when you click share, that's what you're gonna get. But not only can you share to Google Plus, you can share to all sorts of other social networks that everyone forgot about like, 
MySpace and Stumble Upon. Ah, uh, yes, the two most popular social networks today. Yeah, I know MySpace is still a thing to the five people that actually still use it, but uh, it's just kind of funny that this is still an option in here. You've also got like other social networks like Facebook and Twitter that are still around. You can also share with Gmail, with Hotmail, which when we click on this, it just you know, ask you to sign in to outlook.live.com. You can also just uh, share it in an email. If you click on mail here, it'll just ask you to open it up and we'll just say mail and it will open up the mail application. But now let's take a look at some of the things you can actually still use this toolbar for. And one of those is the highlighter feature up here. So this is pretty nice because if I were to click on this, it will highlight all of the listings on the page that match my search query. So my search query is Michael MJD. So it will highlight every instance of Michael MJD that it can find. Now you may wonder why there's two colors. That's just because the search query is two words or what it perceives as two words. If I were to search for say Michael MJD YouTube, now you'll see there will be three if I uncheck and do this again. Now there will be three different colors because there are three different words. And that also ties in with these buttons up here. These will change depending on what your search query is. And this allows you when I click on this, so this will allow you to skim through every, like just go one by one. And it'll just take you to each instance of that term on the page. So I just keep pressing this, it'll skim through every instance of Michael that it can find. The spell check, if you're wondering, doesn't work. If I were to click on this, usually it's supposed to you know, spell check doesn't do that. It just says unable to process the spelling request. Please try again later. If you were to click on help here, uh, see if this, if this does anything. It opens up toolbar help actually. So yes, there is still a help page on Google's support site for Google toolbar. So let's do a search for spell check. Now it says you can correct spelling mistakes while writing on various web pages. So let's try to go to, I wonder if we can do this though, docs.new. This will probably open up an edge, won't it? Yep, it will, of course it will. Well, here's a notepad here we just pulled up. So let me just type out, hello everyone, this is a test of spell check. And we'll purposely misspell that and let's try to check it. Yeah, it's not gonna do anything. So it, it doesn't matter what web page you're on because uh, this is a, a page with a, with a text field here and you can't, you know, it cannot, uh, check that. The next thing I want to touch on is translate. Now I haven't tested this, so I have no idea if this actually still works or not. But we've got the Canadian government website opened up here and I've got it set to French. So we're going to click on translate and it will say this page is in French. Do you want to translate it? We'll say translate. And you can see we've got the old Google logo up here. That kind of indicates to me that maybe this feature hasn't been updated in a while but we'll see if it's able to translate the page. Now, Chrome has this feature built in. If you were to go to actually, I've got, uh, well, does Edge have it built in, I wonder? Yes, Edge has it built in. So this is something that Chrome does as well. Uh, Firefox does not, unfortunately, but I can click on translate here and it will translate the page to English. There you go, the government of Canada's official website. We'll see if, uh, yeah, this is <laughs> definitely taken a while to translate there. Yeah, it's been like three minutes and nope, it's still, saying translation in progress. So my guess is it's not gonna translate my friends. So yet another feature that does not work anymore. Oh, and the pop-up blocker. I think IE comes with one though, at least like the newest version. I'm pretty sure there's probably a pop-up blocker in here somewhere. Yeah, there is right here, pop-up blocker. So there's already one in here, but if you want another pop-up blocker, there's one built in here. Another feature I want to touch on is autofill and that's this right here. So I can click on add and edit profiles and that opens up this toolbar options menu right here, which we saw before. That's how we got to the about information, right? You also have uh, options to change what share services show up in the toolbar. So like if I don't want Facebook to show, I can uncheck that. Under tools here, you can uh, show, you know, hide and show certain tools. Uh, you've got bookmarks as well, so we could enable that if we want to. Custom buttons, these are all of the, you know, buttons that I mentioned before. And again, adding more buttons will not do anything. Privacy, 
You've got the ability to turn off features that send information. Of course, it's very Google-y to collect data. That's just, you have to expect that from them at this point, obviously. But uh, yeah, so you can, you know, I already have some of this disabled, but you can enable, you know, using page rank to see Google's view of the importance of a page. Use plus one to share pages with your circles on Google Plus. Yeah, I totally want to do that. You can send usage statistics, all that stuff. And general is where you can change the language, what Google site you're using, Using if you want to, you know, go to a different country's uh, site there. And yeah, you can use Google as your homepage, etc, etc. But autofill, this is a feature that Chrome has and a lot of other web browsers, right, where you can have it set up to save, you know, your name and address and whatever other information you want to put into it to where when you go to a form like this, like I'm just on the USPS change of address page here and when it asks you for things like your name and email address and stuff you can have it auto fill it for you right auto populate it with your info well google toolbar essentially gives you that same functionality so i can add a profile here and let's say i want to call this one main and we'll just put in my uh my info here okay so we'll hit save so now if i you know i'm on this page here i can go over to more auto fill main click that and it doesn't do anything <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, I kinda, maybe we can reload the page. Let's let's try that because this is you know you've got first and last name, which is what I you I know mean, I put my name into the uh, form there that we just saw. You've got email address here, so we can try to autofill, and it does not does not do anything does not appear to work. So that is another thing that uh, yeah it doesn't appear to work. So really, I mean you're seeing a common theme here, right? The translate thing doesn't work. Autofill doesn't work. The share thing does work with certain, you know, you can, like I already checked out mail. This will open up the mail application, but you've got all these other options that don't work anymore because either the social network doesn't exist anymore in the case of stumble upon or Orcut, or in the case of MySpace, MySpace does exist, as I said, but this page just takes you to a, you know, 410 page because it no longer exists. So that's like on their end, but still it hasn't been updated here. And so you've got like all this stuff. I mean, the program or the toolbar is essentially like half broken. I mean, a lot of the stuff that it claims it can do on the page, it can no longer do. And that's what's really interesting to like see this advertised on Google's. I mean, it's not like they're actively advertising this. I've never seen any mention of this whatsoever. Like I had to actively search out the page, but it's still there. But just to see it made available and still offered for download in this state, without any like disclaimer from Google saying like, oh, this is an old program, it's not been updated, certain things might not work. That's literally the state of Google Toolbar. You can search with it, you can get search suggestions, search with Google Images and stuff, but like that's really all you can do with it. You can highlight stuff, so that's cool. But is it worth switching to Internet Explorer to use this? Absolutely not. I would not recommend anybody <laughs> use Internet Explorer. And is there really a market for this today? I mean, again, only only 0.75% of people that use a web browser use Internet Explorer. And for those people, I guess, if you happen to still be using IE for some reason, this will allow you to search with Google. That's great, but I would recommend just getting a completely different browser. I mean, they are free after all. You've got Chrome, you've got Firefox, you've got Edge, all sorts of browsers out there, right? They're gonna give you more functionality than just IE with this toolbar that is half broken. But that's a look at it, guys. That is uh, the current state of Google toolbar, which is still available to this day in 2021 for some reason. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.